Hello, can everybody hear me? Got a couple of minutes before we start, so I'm just gonna let you pop it yourselves in the chat bar on your right there. Let me know where you're watching and listening from. Let me know if you can hear me okay, if you can see me okay. Grab your tea or your coffee, wherever you are. Ooh, I got a thumbs up. I didn't know that was possible on a live webinar. <laughs> okay, almost there. Okay. I'm gonna get started. We've got a couple people online. Hello, welcome. Gonna give everybody a little bit of time to come in. If you can't hear me, if there's anything going on with the sound or the visuals, uh, as I mentioned before, you've got that live chat bar on your screen, actually might be over here for you. Um, definitely pop the comments in there. Sounds good, watching from Seattle, oh my goodness. Allison, hi, yay, that is so cool. Um, so we're gonna get started. Um, also on that live chat, thanks Allison for saying hi. Um, this is a great place also for you to throw in any questions or discussion points um, that you have. Oh, this is so exciting that it's working. Like. You have no idea. Um, so this is great. If you've got any questions or discussion points, as I was saying, um, feel free to put them in the live chat bar because whenever it comes to live presentations or things like that, um, I always prefer to do it a little bit more like a discussion, a little bit. We can all learn from each other, so feel free. I might not be able to get to your questions specifically, um, in the live chat bar on the right during the presentation, but um, I will leave room for Q&A uh, at the end. So perfect. Hi from Toronto, Shirley, amazing. Um, so yeah, so don't be afraid to throw your questions in the live chat bar for those of you who are just joining us, uh, watching from Ottawa, amazing. You could just come hang out with me. We could have done it real live instead of over a webinar. Um, and also, I want to let you know, for those of you just joining, uh, we've got a Q&A, amazing, Port Dover. This is fabulous. Um, we've got a Q&A at the end of the webinar, so there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end of the webinar as well. But in case there are questions of a more personal nature or anything like that, I've popped my IG uh, in the description box below to this webinar. So um, feel free to send me a DM that way. So, okay, who else do we have? Cambridge, UK, oh my goodness, my mom would be so happy. Um, this is fabulous, Calgary, Niagara Falls, very cool. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. So um, it's just a little bit after one, so I will give the official welcome. Uh, thank you so, so much for joining uh, this webinar hosted by Encircled incredible Canadian brand, two from Calgary, fabulous. So hopefully you're already familiar with Encircled. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them in a couple of minutes, but um, just wanted to say thank you so, so much for joining. I hope uh, I hope you guys will enjoy this. I hope, like I said, you throw your questions and your discussion points in the live chat bar because it's always easy to have a little bit more of a conversation going that way. Um, also in the live chat bar, we've got uh, Peter from Encircled who is joining us. Um, so here he is. I think that's him on the Encircled little icon there. So if you have any product specific questions, because I'm gonna be showing a couple of Encircled products and chatting a little bit more about how they can really integrate into your capsule. Um, so definitely if you've got brand specific questions or really specific product questions, then don't be shy to throw those in the live chat bar. And um, I'm sure Peter will be happy to answer you there as well. Um, and all the information about Encircled, I've also thrown in the description box as well. So um, don't, don't hesitate to check that out. Um, oh, I don't know if you can see the mouse on my screen. Um, Great. So before diving in, uh, I did want to just introduce myself quickly and Encircled. Uh, Encircled is bringing you this webinar. They uh, are collaborating with me very kindly. And if you're not familiar with them, um, then uh, Encircled is an incredible Canadian brand. Everything is made 
in Canada, which is incredibly difficult to do these days. They are a B certified corporation, which is the highest standards of uh, environmental and social um, criteria. So amazing things happening at Encircled, but a little selfishly, what I really like about Encircled is that their pieces are ethically made, use eco-friendly fabrics, but that they really do stand the test of time in any wardrobe. And that's why they make such great pieces for the foundation of your capsule closet, which is what we're gonna touch on more today. They are timeless, versatile, and most importantly, comfortable. I'm wearing the jumpsuit. Uh, this is one of their newer pieces and it's bananas, super comfortable. Um, and Encircled actually has a discount code for all of you watching. So that is linked in the description bar. I'm gonna share it a little bit later on. And all of the pieces that I'm mentioning will be linked in the description box. So you can go directly um, to them. So that's Encircled. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Alyssa. I am a slow fashion expert enthusiast. I have a YouTube channel where every week I talk a lot about using what you already have, a little bit on capsule closets, how to shop for timeless pieces. But by trade, I also do uh, wardrobe styling for commercial projects. So I work a lot with clothing and it's it's a lot of fun to be able to do something like this. Ooh, Cantley, Quebec. Hello. Beautiful spot. Um, so let's jump on in. I think, first of all, you're here because you know uh, why capsule closets and the idea of a capsule wardrobe is so great. But with all of the trend noise that's around, I do think it's important to kind of keep our objectives, keep the, the benefits of a capsule closet in mind. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard the statistic before, but uh, we wear on average 20% of our closet 80% of the time, which it's a little bit crazy and Encircled has this incredible saying where it means, you know, in that case, you ha you should make more space in your closet for less, for pieces that actually do more work for you. And I just love how they say that. Um, so I think with that, capsule closets are an excellent way to help us start paring down our closet. So benefits of a capsule wardrobe, number one, less decision fatigue. I don't know about you, when I used to work my previous life, I used to work in finance, uh, in international finance. And how many mornings would you wake up and like run around with one shoe on looking for what to wear? So less decision fatigue is huge. But the more you do capsule closets season after season, I think this is where you really get to hone in on your personal style because you're working with a very curated and limited number of pieces. So this helps you really focus in. Um, on your personal style, especially as it evolves. So, um, and of, of course, on top of that, capsule closets, awesome for the environment because you're consuming less, because you're investing in these timeless pieces and you get your creative juices flowing. I think there is a misconception that capsule closets are uh, very limiting and you have to sacrifice how many pieces you have. And I'm going to get to that in a minute when we go over the ground rules. Um, but I think we should see these capsule closets as more freedom, as investing in these timeless pieces, as, you know, getting more creative. So that's what we're going to dive into a little bit more. Um, for the purposes of this webinar, I don't know if you have either printed out or if you saw the wonderful workbook that was um, delivered to you via Encircled and the power of the internet. Um, I'm just looking at the comments here. Let me know in the comments below if you've got it in front of you or you know if you if you don't, that's fine too. Um, but to start, I did want to talk about kind of the ground rules when it comes to building your first capsule closet. Um, and I think this is important to remember whether this is your first capsule closet. Oh, great, Shirley, awesome. Um, whether this is your first capsule closet or your fifth, I think setting sort of these expectations for yourself is important to keep in mind. And this is especially important because there are so many resources about capsules out there. So I'm actually curious to know how many of you, is this your first capsule wardrobe or is this your first foray into the subject or are you like capsule veteran here to hopefully learn something new? Um, let me know in the live chat. Um, I'm really curious, or maybe it's this side. I still, I'm not sure which way you're seeing it, um, but let me know, I'm curious. And for the capsule veterans, 
uh, throw in any tips uh, you've got in there because I think we can all learn and benefit from each other's knowledge. So uh, going over the ground rules, number one, and this goes with any, I think, new style initiative or closet initiative that you want to undertake for yourself. Um, be kind to yourself. I mean, you'll find on the internet all of these beautiful, like, curated racks where there's only, like, three pieces of clothing. And it's really easy to compare yourself with other people and other people's capsules um, and do a little bit of that comparison game, which... It's not easy. It's not fun. Um, I'm curious to see a bit of both. Trying to downsize. Excellent. Uh, newbie, but have been attempting. Great. Capsule veteran, Lindsay Ontario. Bonita. Amazing. Uh, looking forward to hearing any tips you have. Um, but I really do think being kind and patient with yourself is number one because um, there, there's so much out there and it's so easy to compare. So like I said, whether this is your first or your 15th capsule, um, I think you can always learn something new. Bonita, tell me if I'm wrong. Like, do you learn something new every time you do a new capsule, a new season? Um, I think, I think being patient with yourself is number one. Number two, as I mentioned, Lots of resources out there about capsule closets. And I definitely encourage you to kind of do your research, take what you need from each, but know that there isn't an optimal number of items that works across the board for everybody. Um, all of our lifestyles are different. Our personal style is so different. Um, so it's really it's really important to keep that in mind. And as you build your capsule closet season after season, um, I think you'll really come to a number, but it's not gonna happen right away. I think this is a slow process and why it's a big part of slow fashion. Um, Jane says, a bit afraid to get rid of things, no specific style, okay likes to change often and mostly thrift shopping. Thrift shopping's great. Um, and I totally understand about having a difficult time getting rid of things. And we'll touch on that a little bit uh, once we get into kind of the step-by-step -step of building your first capsule. Um, but that's definitely something I think a lot of us struggle with. Um, the other ground rule that I'm laying out, especially for today's webinar, especially for the new people, I think it's easiest to go through and build a capsule one season at a time, because this helps you kind of break your closet down into easier to digest pieces, and it's easier to create a capsule when you're just focusing on the one season. So for today's, um, for today, the purposes of today's webinar, we're going to be sticking with fall winter season. If anyone's watching from the Southern Hemisphere, I apologize, um, but you're a lot warmer than I am now, so <laughs> I don't feel so bad. Um, but we are going to stick with the fall winter season. But I do think there, um, you know, there's also something to be said about having seasonless items. And I think you'll discover those, that you keep those in rotation every season, um, and you kind of add those more seasonal items as you go. But it definitely takes um, one more, one or two more seasons for you to get the hang of that. But Encircled has some incredibly seasonless pieces with uh, which I'll be showing today. So I'm excited to get to that. Um, Shirley says, too many opinions, lots of lists online that are very overwhelming. So, okay, um, that's good. That leads me to my last ground rules point, which is, sorry, I had a little blip in my internet. I hope everyone can still see me. Um, so what do you, if you missed that, I mentioned, what do you include and what do you exclude in your capsule? Uh, and again, you'll see different opinions online. In my personal opinion, especially because this would be your first capsule, or especially if this is your first capsule, only include garments. Don't include uh, footwear, belts, accessories like sunglasses and jewelry, simply because those are the easiest ways for you to really spice up those garments in your capsule and get used to working with a limited number of garments. You know, perhaps go a couple seasons in, try a couple more capsules, uh, and then start, you know, maybe choosing a select amount of footwear and accessories. But to start, I like to include those accessories because they really are able to spice up your looks. So, 
ground rules done. How do you all feel about that? I'm going over a lot of the comments. Um, lots of lots of people who are just starting out with capsules. So that's pretty awesome. The first step. Let's let's get started. Actually, I'm going to take a quick sip of water. The first step when it comes to building your capsule, instead of taking the approach, especially if you have a large closet, of looking at all of your clothing, sacrificing something. Like we can only choose two tops because that's what, you know, X printout that we found on Pinterest says. Um, but instead, I like to do it this way, where you start with a general sorting of your closet. Uh, and this is because, you know, it's really hard to make any style changes if you don't know what you already have and you're not very comfortable with, you know, understanding what you like and what you don't like within your own closet. So three piles that you can start with when you're sorting your closet. Go through each item. Your first pile should be clothing that you haven't worn for the past 12 to, I would say, 16 months. You don't like it, it doesn't fit, it doesn't make you feel good, or you just haven't worn it. Perhaps it was for another phase of your life that you're moving into something different that will become your discard pile. And I think it's important to note here that, um, you know, never try and try not to ever send textiles to landfill. There are some great, um, there are some really, really great options for textile recyclers. You can just Google that, throw it into your search bar, um, and you'll come up with a whole bunch of different ones um, around you. So. Unwearable garments can still have a life afterwards. I think that's really important to note, especially for the environment side of things. Um, so you've got your discard pile. Now, we had a question about um, not knowing when to let go of items. And there's two tricks that you can do. One of them is actually in the minimalist workbook, which Encircled has. I've linked that down in the description box below as well, because that's just a fabulous resource. But um, it's the reverse hanger trick. So for all of the clothes that you're not sure whether you want to let go of them or not, hang all of hang those garments up as you would in your closet with all of the hangers facing one way. And then every time you wear a garment, when you're done with it and you put it back, put it back with the garment hanger facing the other way. And after about six months, if you're still humming and hawing, check to see which garments the hangers are still facing the original way. And that I think gives you a pretty solid answer on whether you need to keep that garment or not. So that's a great little trick. Um, oh yes, good, it does work so well. Thanks, Allison. Um, yeah, someone's saying, are you still there? I just lost the link. Yes, I lost the connection for a second, um, but I think we're good. Okay, great, thanks, Joanna. Um, the other little trick that I use when I'm not sure what to keep or let go if you, if the hanger trick doesn't work for you, if you need to keep things like out of sight, I have, this is the one I do, I have a little basket uh, in my closet and it, and that's where all of my maybes go. So they're not hanging, but if after six months I haven't even looked in that basket, like I haven't had a hankering for anything in there, then I know it's time to go. So you've really given yourself that extra validation on whether you're gonna use those pieces or not realistically. So um, for any of you having trouble hanging on or letting things go, I hope those tricks help. Um, but that's kind of the first section of your sort. Now you're left with clothes that you like. And the next step is, um, got a question about occasional things. I'm gonna get to that in a second. That's a great question. Um, the next step then is to take the items that you love and you feel good in and that you like to wear and that still fit really well, but they're not in the right season. So go ahead and store those seasonal items. So now what you're left with is essentially the foundation of your first capsule. And I think, especially if you've been doing a lot of researching and Pinterest, this might be a bit, seem a little bit unconventional because it doesn't seem as curated, but I really do think for your first one, it takes away that stress of only having to choose one or two pieces. Ultimately, you're left with pieces that you know and love. And the next steps with filling in your closet, finding the redundancies, those are gonna come later. 
And your capsule will evolve over time as you become more discerning. But for the first time, I think this is a great way to just whittle it down into pieces that you love. So, um, oh, we got a Angel. Ryan suggested, ask yourself how you would feel if you ran into your ex while wearing said garment. <laughs> That's a really good one. That's a great question to ask yourself. Uh, love that. Um, another question that you could ask if you're worried is, um, you know, you can ask yourself, if this was in a store, would I make that purchase? That's another really good one as well. Um, question about occasion wear. That's a really good one. And I tend to treat it um, a little bit separately, uh, almost as its own capsule in that sense, because depending, and it'll also depend on your lifestyle. If you wear occasion wear often, um, then I would maybe suggest either, you know, having its own smaller capsule completely separate, or make sure you have like two or three dresses in your capsule that you can have on rotation for the season. Um, and that'll bring me to actually one of my other steps, um, which kind of as you're reflecting, there's a lot of lifestyle questions in mind. And because you're only planning a season ahead, and I know this isn't always possible, but um, hopefully for more formal occasions, you'll know if they're coming up. So that's something that you can plan for in your seasonal capsule as you're looking at those items that you've kept. I think it's important to consider the weather, your lifestyle, and if you have any big occasions coming up. So you could do it two ways. You could be preemptive, figure out what you've got on your agenda in the next two to three months and make sure you include your occasion wear, one or two pieces that you need in there. Or if you're always attending formal functions, then I would definitely give it a separate capsule and go through the same sorting process. So I hope that answers the um, occasion wear question. Yes, excellent, good, I'm so glad. Thanks, Jane. Um, all right, so now you've sorted your closet. You're left with these garments that you hopefully like, that still fit you, that you still feel great in. And the next step, in my opinion, is where it's really important now to reflect. And I think this is what the importance is with capsule closets, is, is that mindful piece. We're not blindly going out and shopping. So I think it's important here to have a look at what you've got, what you love, and consider your wardrobe goals. So as you continue with the rest of the assessment, because you've probably seen in the workbook, we've got six questions um, as part of that reflection coming up. Um, so before that, though, it's important to keep these wardrobe goals in mind. I always keep two in mind. And the first one is more aesthetic based, you know, Maybe it's um, trying to stick to a certain color palette. And you can decide what that color palette is, or you can do it based on what you feel your, your closet needs now that you're looking at this more curated collection of your closet. And again, I find a lot of the capsule closets on Pinterest, they're, they use a lot of neutrals. And even my little demo capsule that you can see here, um, has a lot of neutrals, but that's just me. I think you can determine if you want to perhaps have a base of cohesive colors that still work together. That's what's important. You can totally have a colorful capsule or a capsule that has a lot of prints, for example. It's totally possible. Um, you just have to make sure that the colors work together. And if that's your base, colorful capsule, it is important to have a couple of neutrals in there as well to kind of ground everything out. So, you know, thinking of that wardrobe goal from the aesthetic perspective is great. Um, and then I always like to think of a values-based goal. And this really is totally your personal opinion, um, whether it's, you know, you wanna help the environment by buying only eco-friendly fabrics, such as what you would find at Encircled. Absolutely beautiful. This is Modal, super soft, breathable, eco-friendly fabrics. Um, that's one of my favorite uh, wardrobe goals because I just feel like you benefit as a human because you're just so comfortable all the time. Um, but anyway, so think about those two wardrobe goals as you go through this next little step, your assessment questions. Um, this is the little list of questions that I made. I hope you like them. I hope you fill them out. You can do it online if you like to. Um, 
the first one, and I think it's important to have the clothes that you're looking at um, out in front of you so that you can answer these, you know, without just our mind and our emotions play tricks on us. So you've got to do this while looking at, at the clothes that you've kept. Um, so which silhouettes flatter you most? What do you wear and love the most? I think if we look, you'll really find either some patterns, not necessarily like patterns on your clothing, but repetitions in your own clothes. Like, oh, I wear a lot of fit and flare. Like, why is that? Because I feel great in it. Awesome. Um, so really paying attention because that'll help you identify when you're out shopping what silhouettes work for you right away. So you'll be able to cut out a lot of that noise, a lot of that trend noise. Um, the next one, we kind of talked about it already, color palette, what color palette suits you best, or perhaps that's one of your goals. Where do you want to head uh, in terms of your colors? The next one, what textures make you feel good? Fabrics, this could be you might want to inject some more textures into your closet. Again, that could be part of your goal of including more eco-friendly, more natural fibers into your closet. Um, and this one, this next question, hands down my favorite, do these items suit my lifestyle? This is often where I used to do personal styling for individuals. This is often where the biggest disconnect was. And again, um, the Encircled team has a great workbook where they actually have an even more in-depth exercise about how you can decide whether your lifestyle suits your closet and all these things. It's amazing. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, but this is the best question. I mean, like I said, when I used to work in banking, I had all these beautiful vintage dresses in my closet and like I would never wear them. It just didn't make sense. So this is a big one. The easiest way to answer this, in my opinion, is just figure out what your three core activities are um, during the day or during your week or in your season and make sure you have clothes that work with those lifestyle activities. Um, the next two questions, where are the redundancies? Do you have like eight white button down shirts. Not gonna lie, that's me. <laughs> I love my button downs. Um, or where are the gaps? So you've got to assess both. The redundancies are just as important as finding the holes in your closet. Um, and I think this brings me to my next little page in the workbook. This is so cool. I've never done one of these with a workbook. Thank you Encircled for making me do, do this workbook. It's amazing. Um, Always, always shop with a list. So in your workbook, you've got a fantastic list where you can fill in the gaps in your closet and what it is that you need. And like I said, once you've filled out all of your gaps and you found what it is you need, that will be your full capsule, but it's going to evolve and it's not going to happen overnight. So patience really is important here. Um, but I think what's important um, is that you be so specific with your items. That's why there's like a lot of space here so that you're not just writing down a pair of pants. You would write down, for example, oh, gorgeous wide leg, eco-friendly made pants from Encircled that I can wear to work and play, for example. Because the more specific that you get in your list, again, the easier it is to clear out the noise. And we've also put a little brand and budget column in there as well, because if you are going to make these types of investment purchases, the cost for wear, the cost for wear is phenomenal. You'll have them for seasons to come. Uh, and this is another great seasonless piece because they're so light. Um, and yet you could definitely get away with wearing these in the winter because the weight and drape is so beautiful. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna get to those specific pieces momentarily. Um, but anyway, being specific about your list, super, super important. Um, and the budget because if you're buying these investment pieces, like I said, the cost per wear is going to end up being incredible versus if you bought a whole bunch of different things on a whim that you only wear a few times. Sylvie said something, I am in the situation where I my lifestyle is changing, but I still love my clothes ah, that no longer fit in that new lifestyle. That's a really interesting point. Um, really interesting. So you still love your clothes. I think this is where styling could come into play. And 
I would recommend if perhaps, you know, your lifestyle and your clothing doesn't necessarily match, I would still go through the process of sorting because knowing what you like and identifying silhouettes, colors, textures, all of those things that are that appeal to you, I think that's still really important to know. Um, and I think perhaps maybe learning a couple of styling tricks with what you already have might be useful as well. So still a good test, I think. I hope that kind of helps, Sylvie. Um, next, ooh, capsule wardrobe organization. Um, I'm gonna take a quick, quick sip of water, but I'm just curious. Um, who has done a closet purge or a closet cleanse or an audit, for example? Um, how many of you have done that kind of recently or do you do it regularly? I'd love to know. Um, pop that in the live chat, please. I'm curious to see. Um, and I'm sure I'll get some comments in a moment. But next, in your workbook, I added this little sheet. Oh, yay, hands up, Andy, amazing. Um, that's awesome, actually. I would recommend doing these, I mean, if you're gonna do your capsule wardrobe on a seasonal basis, that means you would be doing your closet sorting on a seasonal basis as well. Um, and that's about as, as often as I go through my closet. So um, it's definitely valuable. Um, this next guy I've thrown in because I think once you've got all your clothes up, it's kind of nice to see what you've already got in your closet. And also, um, to, just to kind of determine what your categories are. Sometimes it's overwhelming to look at a whole bunch of clothes and like it's really hard to pick out outfits or determine whether uh, a simple or not, like whether you like dresses over separates. So organizing what you've got just by classifying it really simply can also be really helpful. So um, that's just an extra little page in your workbook there. Um, and now, did a closet purge last year, surely. Didn't help, oh no. Still feel like you have too many things that don't go together. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, in the stage of sorting and purging. Yeah, so surely I would definitely recommend, like if you're still feeling overwhelmed, then what I would do is, um, if you can, I would say try and pick maybe two or three themes that do go together out of that bunch of clothing that you still have. Like if you've done your sorting and you're like, okay, these are all the pieces that I really like, um, but you're still a bit confused, then I would say, okay, let's narrow it down. What are my top two favorite colors or my favorite neutrals? And narrow it down and try working with just those pieces. I think when you have a lot, it's really about kind of narrowing it down as much as you can. Um, now, wanting to get to my little sample capsule that I've included in the workbook. But again, this is just like very bare bones suggestion. It's not written in stone. Um, I just thought it was important to include some of the essentials um, in kind of a in your simplest, most basic capsule. Again, this is definitely not, not written in stone, um, but I thought it was a great chance to share some of the amazing encircled items that really can form a great foundation to your capsule closet. So the first piece is a dress. And again, I only put one dress here because I'm less of a dress and one piece person and I prefer separates. So for example, maybe you don't even like dresses at all. You could go with this fabulous jumpsuit that I'm wearing. So it's definitely free. You can choose, pick and choose whatever suits you. But I do think it's important to have one of those one piece that is a little bit more elevated, um, a little bit more sort of formal, not occasion wear, but something that like a passepartout that you can grab in a pinch. So a jumpsuit, or I've done a little bit of a two for one here, and I've taken the encircled long cardigan. This is such a fabulous piece. I kind of wish we were doing this like in person so that you could touch it because it's just so gorgeous. Um, but in the workbook, there's actually a picture of me wearing this as a dress. So definitely the versatility of your capsule pieces is key. Um, you have so many more. Yes, I know. I know, Jane. Don't worry. This is like a very 
fucking minimal. <laughs> Absolute minimal one. And I still think you should stick with the clothes that you like. I think these are more like your foundational pieces in your capsule. Don't be intimidated. Um, so anyway, going with this one versatile piece that can work as a dress. So now you've got your cardigan and your dress as well. It's like a great two for one. Absolutely love this piece. You can use a skirt as a separate, but again, if you love skirts more than pants, then you can adjust those numbers as well. And again, the numbers here are literally like the ultimate basics. You can have three skirts if you like, or five pairs of pants. That's totally cool. I'm gonna go over when it comes to the doubles. So when we're talking about having more than one blazer or jacket, maybe you have three or four blazers, that's totally cool, or multiple jackets. What's important when you are looking at those pieces and where you wanna identify the gap, I think it's really important to nail different colors different silhouettes and different occasions because pieces like the separates, I think separates are incredibly versatile. So for example, I've got these two blazers here. They satisfy two different colors. So I get a little bit of color in my closet, but also the silhouettes are so different. This beautiful one by Encircled has a great drape. It's really elegant. It can be belted really beautifully. This is such a fabulous piece. And it also layers a lot easier because it's malleable. It's this beautiful, like soft fabric. Again, I wish you could touch it. Um, but this makes a great layering piece, a little bit better than something like this blazer. However, this would serve a purpose too because it's got that structure, those sharp, clean lines. So what's important when you have multiple items of something similar in your capsule is that make sure they vary so that you can handle different occasions if you like, and also so that you get a little bit of a color variance in there as well. Um, I absolutely, I have to say, this is, this is such a fabulous piece as well. Um, and why I like it, again, I mentioned layering, it's absolutely fantastic for it. Um, pants, same thing. You know, a lot of people, you want to throw in your denim, that's great. But if you're looking for something more elevated, then I would definitely make sure you've got very varying silhouettes, beautiful wide leg by encircled, and then the really cool undressy jogger. Um, in fact, Peter, can I, can I keep these? <laughs> they're, they're so amazing. Um, they've got pockets, they're incredibly versatile. And, you know, I'm talking about having denim and having all these different structures, but hopefully as you go through your shopping list and as you build your capsule, you'll kind of learn to appreciate and love versatile pieces like these because, I mean, in reality, you could wear these with, you know, a heel and a great structured jacket, for example, if you want to add a little bit more. I mean, I think they would look great with the unblazer as well and make a suit, but, you know, it just, it makes it a little bit different. It gives these pants a different vibe or you wear them with a t-shirt and a sneaker um, and you're good to go there as well. So. On your shopping list, versatility should be key. Which, oh, Jane, which pants were you? I think you might have been talking about these. So these are the encircled undressy, uh, sorry, these are the in, un, encircled dressy uh, jogging pant. They're fabulous. They have pockets, great little taper at the ankle. Love them. Um, I also think, especially because we're talking about fall, if we're looking at our sample capsule and items that are kind of those essentials, um, yes, thank you. <laughs> the dressy sweatpants, they're amazing. Um, right, so we're talking about our tops. Definitely, I always include more tops in a capsule than bottoms, and that's simply because they require a little bit more switching out. Bottoms can last a little bit longer, um, but I always include a good mix of heavy versus lighter. And this is really important for layering. So, but again, that might depend. You might not wanna have any heavyweight sweaters in your capsule if you run hot. So all of these numbers can be interchangeable. But the other, I think, 
the two really important layering pieces are the basic long sleeve top. And I think, whoop, I think you'll find um, that these are one of those seasonless pieces. This one is also by encircled. Um, and again, it's modal, so a really nice breathable material, beautiful fabric that drapes well. So you'll be able to wear this all year round. And that's why I included just a basic long sleeve tee. Whether you have one or two, I would recommend having at least two um, in different colors because they make fabulous layering pieces, but look amazing on their own as well. Um, oh, I think I forgot to mention, I, I'm sure you all looked in the description box, but um, the discount code is Ms. Bell Tempo. Um, it's, so it's M-S-B-E-L-T-E-M-P-O. And the discount, which this is, I just thought I would mention this because I'm going through all these pieces. Um, it's $50 off your total order when you purchase anything $300 or more. So um, that's absolutely fantastic of Encircled. And even better, sorry, I think you're shaking now. <laughs> I just get so excited. It's uh, free shipping as well. And that is international and within Canada. So um, discount code is down below as well if you want to check that out. Um, finishing up our capsule essential pieces. Um, where are we at? Oh, our layering, our shirts and our t-shirts or camisoles. I always love to include a little shirt, can be a blouse too. It differs a lot um, from something like this simply because it adds the collar. Um, so it gives a little bit of a variety. But again, um, something like this is just so versatile. You might find it's all you need. And of course, uh, t-shirts, camisoles, even though we're talking fall, winter, I think those are still great seasonless items because they're perfect for layering underneath a sweater, if you like. Um, and I have to say, I've had my encircled t-shirt for almost a year now, and it, they're so color fast. Uh, it's quite amazing. So for basics and just things that you're going to wear on the daily, that's a great staple piece. Um, oh, the hanger, yes, it is rose gold. To be honest, I forgot where I bought them now. Um, I will have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> Great question. Does anyone have any questions about, um, you know, kind of those essentials in a sample capsule? I feel like it always takes a second for the questions to come through, but um, what is the last piece? To the right, when I am facing the rack, I am facing it. This one? It's a T, it's just, it's the simple V-neck t-shirt from Encircled. Lee, let me know if, if I got that right. Okay. Um, it's fabulous. I wear it all the time, even during the winter, because again, that natural fabric, it, it lets me breathe, um, but it also kind of keeps my body heat in. It's absolutely fabulous. Um, let me know if I was wrong though, Lee. No, the beige. Oh, and it's my purse. I added it for the color. <laughs> Sorry, I should take this away. Um, I just added it. I just added it to show the um, the different colors, plus size, and have size change issues. This is interesting. So um, Jane had a really great point. No problem, Lee. Um, great point about if your weight fluctuates, um, and I think that's kind of the beauty of the seasonal capsule and allowing you to store items. So I would definitely not store items though any longer than a year. I hope that helps answer. Where do you add color and decide which colors will suit your lifestyle best? Andy, great question. Um, because we're not including accessories in this one, I think you can add color easily. Scarves, belts, shoes, bags as well. However, if you do want to add color, my suggestion is often to do it in the lighter layering pieces. So that's um, pieces like the gorgeous v-neck or the t-shirt or even something like the unblazer because you can throw this underneath a moto jacket um, and you're going to add that beautiful blue, that pop of color as well. So that's where I would, I would try and keep it on the lighter pieces because they're a little bit easier to weave in and out. More styling options. Yes, ooh, 
that that's a little bit difficult because I can't, I wish I could change. However, uh, we're going to talk about styling right now, actually. So great point. We're going to lead into that. Um, so styling tips. In my opinion, whether you have a giant closet or a more minimal one, I think styling is where the magic happens. And this is sort of, you know, anything from, oh, do I pop this collar or leave it down to other styling tricks like layering. So for example, let's take our first example of layering. And as I did in the photo, I would definitely layer. I love layering two blazers together, but of course it's going to depend on how much volume you've got in your top blazer. So that's also something else to consider. Um, but our first layering combination is something cool like this because you can see the beautiful long collar coming out. The colors work beautifully together. And what I would do is throw it with the matching pant. So the structure of this blazer on top, and it doesn't have to be the camel blazer, it could even be a moto jacket. I think what's interesting with this layering technique is that you're getting two very different silhouettes. Um, so I actually, I absolutely love this. And then you could just pop a t-shirt or a camisole underneath. You're essentially creating like this great power suit. Gosh, I love this. I should, I should wear this. <laughs> um, other layering tricks that you can do, this is absolutely one of my favorites. Um, and where those long sleeve tees come in handy, I would layer something like, you could pull from the gray and I would layer this, the long sleeve. Oh, it's, I wish I could like try all these on for you. I would layer the long sleeve underneath the cute little striped shirt. Um, but what's important, a lot of times when we layer, and I think this is where you'll get the most out of your capsule, is you kind of have to make it really obvious that you're layering. Hang on, I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna try and do this. Hang on, I have to think about this. I'm gonna try and show you. I love how you layer long sleeve. Never thought of that. Thank you, Joanna. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I think it's kind of like a, gosh, I feel like I did that in grade, maybe like that was a cool thing I did in grade, like, I don't know. I remember it being really cool when I was in grade 10 or 11. Um, and I love the layered sleeve look. But what I'm trying to get at here when it comes to layering, especially, especially if you've got two long sleeves. Um, so you could do something like this. Okay, but it's really important. Oh man, I need an assistant. Where's my mother? Oh. Okay, here we go. This is where the styling hack comes in when it comes to layering. Lots of times you just throw something on top of something else and you're like, great, I've layered something, but it doesn't look that great. But if you wanna accentuate and show a little bit more depth and dynamism, is that a word, in your outfit, then what I would do is while you have it on, roll up the sleeve, leave this collar a little bit open so that you can see the beautiful layer underneath. So it doesn't just look like you've thrown two shirts on at the same time. It actually looks deliberate and intentional. And you're really getting a lot of use out of both of these pieces. Um, styling is a skill I do not have. Oh no, I don't believe, I think you can learn it. Uh, Valerie, I'm pretty sure you can learn it, um, especially when you've got great classic pieces like this. These are the easiest ones to style. So um, definitely invest in some classics, but I believe you can do it. Um, so that's that's kind of the trick, in my opinion, to layering is making it making it obvious, if you know what I mean, like making it look a little bit more intentional. Um, so layering is a great one. Actually, with that little ensemble, with the gray underneath, I have to show you, I would have paired that with, I would have tucked the shirt into these awesome, or you could leave it open, totally up to you, um, into the nice, beautiful wide leg pants for a more elevated look, or I would have done that little layer with a simple pair of denim and a, and a sneaker. 
easy. So you've got the same kind of top combo. I think I was a little bit too hasty in getting <laughs> in undoing that styling trick. Um, and then with those two bottoms, you have two fabulous outfits. So I hope that kind of helps when it comes to layering. The next styling hack when it comes to capsule wardrobes in particular, like these are just the ones in the workbook, the styling hacks that I've outlined, I find are the ones that are most pertinent to when you're dealing with a capsule. Um, but there are so many other styling hacks out there. Um, the second one, changing up your silhouette with accessories. Um, and this is easiest done especially with pieces like Encircled. A lot of times we just put on a blazer or the unblazer, so to speak, and kind of take it for granted that it just hangs beautifully. But by simply belting it, you've created a whole new silhouette. And this can also be done, you know, you don't even need accessories to create a whole new silhouette. For example, um, this beautiful shirt, the long sleeve, this is their fair collection from Encircle. Um, from Encircled, even if you just knot it at the waist and you wear it with, actually, if it were knotted at the waist, what I would do is wear it with the beautiful wide leg um, pants because this has so much volume and it's kind of nice to contrast if you've got something really voluminous and has a little bit of volume on the bottom. It's nice to contrast that with something a little bit more fitted on top. So that's how I would put those two pieces together so that you can accentuate your shape a little bit. Um, so you could either knot this guy at the waist or you could change up the silhouette simply by tucking it in. Um, and then when it comes to styling, this is another beauty of it. It'll all, the, the silhouette will change depending on how you tuck it in. So you could do a full tuck with this shirt and these beautiful wide leg pants, or, uh, and again, this is gonna depend on your body type, your lifestyle as well. You could do a little quasi tuck, like a French tuck where you only do the front in and you let the sides hang. That's gonna completely change the vibe of the look as well as the overall silhouette. So you don't necessarily need accessories to change up the silhouette of any of these pieces, but um, you know, a simple tuck, a little knot on the side or in the front, um, quite, gosh, that's why I love these, classic versatile pieces. You have no idea. Um, or maybe you do because I'm so excited. Um, that was changing up the silhouette. If you have any styling questions, please let me know. Uh, Lee, would it be wise to purchase two sizes? Ooh, excellent question. So Lee's question is, would it be wise to purchase two sizes of the long sleeve, one for under and one for over? Um, I don't, I don't think so because you've got enough volume here on the sides. I think the only, and I don't know that I would be layering this over anything other than um, a camisole or a t-shirt. Um, and that would be where you would have issue in the sleeve. So I don't think you would need to purchase it in two sizes. I think what's important is getting the size that fits you perfectly, um, especially because it drapes really well and it has a little bit of stretch to it. So this is more of a great layering piece for underneath, um, for underneath items perhaps that you already have, like those more voluminous blouses or shirts like the boyfriend kind of shirt that I had here. I hope that helps, Lee. I hope that answers your question. That's a great question. Um, where are we at styling? Oh, this is another one of my favorites mixing textures and mixing styles. So mixing textures is pretty obvious. Um, it's kind of like, it's the one that I have in the picture in the workbook there. Great pair of these beautiful joggers, right? Like the dressy sweatpant. It looks elegant. It looks really luxe, especially if you pair it with a killer heel. Um, I got I got some fun comments on Instagram being like, but there's snow, how are you wearing those heels? I thought it was quite funny, very valid questions. Um, but when it comes to capsules, I think one of the tenets is realizing that you can pair all of these pieces together. I think a lot of us, you're welcome, Lee. Um, I think a lot of I think a lot of us tend to put our garments in these like categories, like these pants I wear to work. 
And these shoes I wear only to special occasions. But when it comes to dealing with a capsule, you have to really kind of throw those self-imposed rules out the window because the beauty and the magic in really interesting looks comes from throwing these unexpected pieces together. So mixing those textures like, you know, a nice heavy gauge knit sweater with a beautiful, almost silky looking, I really like these pants, Peter, <laughs> jogger. Um, then, you know, you've kind of got interest, not only in the mix of texture, but it also creates kind of a like, oh, that's really interesting. It's almost that unexpected feeling of pairing something that just looks, you know, very cozy and casual with something that looks very sleek and elevated. Um, and of course, uh, and of course, your footwear choice is going to make a huge difference. But that's why when it comes to capsules, the versatility of your garments are key. You need to be able to interchange them and wear them with different things. Um, Valerie said, yes, the dressy sweatpants, they would. They would look awesome with both a sneaker or a beautiful pump. So, and to be honest, this look could also work with sneakers or a beautiful pump. Um, so mixing the textures and mixing the styles is a great one. Another um, another example of that would be, oh, the dressy sweatpants are all mine. Yay, thank you, Peter. <laughs> Yay. Um, another, thank you, that's so cool. Um, another example of mixing these styles could be something that I showed earlier where you've got something very structured, a little bit kind of, you know, clean and crisp looking here with something beautiful and flowy like the wide leg. I think this is just so elegant, like the nice wide. And again, we're mixing not only two different styles, but we're mixing um, two different volumes and proportions of fabric, or not proportions, two different silhouettes. We've got something beautiful and flowy and elegant versus the clean lines and structure here of this blazer. Um, underneath this, to be honest, I love a neutral and a neutral, but to keep a nice kind of slimming, sleek base, um, I would throw just a nice, simple black tee underneath. Gosh, I love this outfit already. Look at this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> here. Oh gosh, I feel like I should, I'm gonna have a model next time. I'm gonna get my mom in here. Um, and then these beautiful, kind of flowy. I think this is great. I could imagine someone, a very busy woman, throwing on sneakers with this look, sending her kids to, you know, school, daycare, camp, whatever, running to the office, swapping for a pair of heels, keep the blazer on, then heading out at night, maybe she throws on a pair of earrings, um, keeps her beautiful pumps on from work, uh, and then if she really had to, she could probably like hop on a plane and jet set to Tokyo because that's just who she is. Uh, and she would be super comfortable and super chic. Had another question. Oh, how do you tell when something is not working? That's a great question. Uh, I think to be honest, it's your own feeling. Um, do you not like it? Are you... Are you fidgeting with it? That means there might be something off with the fit. Like, are you constantly adjusting? Um, maybe that means you've chosen the wrong belt because it's not staying up. It's not sticking to the, say, for example, you've belted the unblazer. Uh, you know, you're going to have to choose a belt that has a little bit of friction so that it stays up, so that it kind of works with the fabric. So if you're fidgeting, if you're not feeling great, then to be honest, then you know something's not working. If there's a little bit of doubt, I would say that's that's kind of how you know. I don't know if that if that helps. I just think if you don't feel awesome in something, then then that's kind of how you know. Or if it's not highlighting parts of you that you want to show off and it's it's really accentuating like things that you're like, oh no, I don't want like no thank you. Uh then then that's how you know it's not working. It's it's really about kind of showing off your best self. And um, and that's something whenever I talk about styling and just getting dressed in general, I think a lot of us, we've been trained to think, 
okay, what are the parts of my body that I want to camouflage, for example? But I think we should really be thinking from the sense of what are the parts of me that I want to show off? Did I just get a really cool new pair of earrings? So I'm going to choose a neckline that shows that off or uh, that kind of thing. So I don't know if that, I don't know if that helps. Um, my awesome might appear goofy. Mm, I don't, I think if you feel awesome in it and you carry it with confidence, I, a, who cares what other people think? Um, but B, no, I think I think that confidence will come from you and you'll feel awesome uh, and people will appreciate that. I think I think we also live in this world where, you know, pieces that are more versatile, more classic, um, that, that there's kind of no rules anymore. Like, yes, there are trends, but people are appreciating everyone's own individual style. Um, and I think that's important to remember. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, oh, I love that. Sylvie says, if I smile when I look at myself wearing something, it's a winner. I love that. Thank you, Sylvie. Thanks for sharing. I thought that was great. Um, so we've talked about mixing textures. Uh, we've talked about mixing styles. The last styling hack that I think is the most important for a capsule closet when you're dealing with that, think outside the box. Um, definitely, you know, and that example would be wearing the cardigan as a dress. Are there different ways that you can wear these pieces that, you know, it might not be predestined to be a cardigan just because it's called a cardigan on the website when Encircled made it, this other fabulous piece. Um, you know, I saw a picture on their Instagram recently, all of their staff was wearing it, but it looked different on everybody. So I think what's really important is to, you know, think beyond where you like how you envisioned that garment working when you bought it like can I wear it with this can I wear it to this event if I add say a beautiful like statement necklace that kind of thing um and I think it's important too like sometimes the subtlest details can change the the, the look of a garment so adding a necklace like adding a very long necklace to this piece will extend the torso and kind of draw the eye up and down. So, and change up the neckline a bit, like make the V look deeper than it actually is. So there's so many ways, I think, um, when it comes to styling with capsules, like really thinking outside the box is huge. Um, those are most of the styling hacks. Um, that I wanted to cover and we're almost we're already an hour. Oh my gosh. Are you guys tired? <laughs> I'm having so much fun. I think I could do this all day. Um, I wanted to finish though um, because you know once you've tested your capsule, I think what's really important to remember, you know, you've done these styling tricks, you've played around with the clothes, you've made your shopping list. Go, I would say one month, I mean, unless you got rid of some things that are absolute essentials, like pants or something that you wear every day and you have to go out and buy it. But I would say try going one month without, you know, filling any gaps or letting anything else go from your capsule. Really work with the items that you put aside. Um, and, oh, hang on. Capsule wardrobes seem more geared to older individuals. Ooh, I'm going to answer that one or maybe we'll chat in a second. I just wanted to finish this thought in case some people have to go because it's been an hour. Um, yeah, that, that reflection portion really taking about a month um, to live with the capsule, see how it works, and then ask yourself questions at the end of the season. Or you can ask yourself these kind of reflective questions, um, you know, during that month as well while you're testing out your capsule. Um, so we've added in the workbook a little sheet um, just that you can either write in it if you like, or these are just great things to kind of keep in the back of your mind. What did you wear most? And I would include, I would be sure to be specific here, not only what garments did you wear most, but what outfits did you wear most? Like, was there a combo? Like, was there a certain formula that you seemed to gravitate to all the time? And if so, write it down because then you might be able to kind of build an outfit formula that really works for you and that you can kind of replicate as you go. Um, what gets sent to storage? And then 
what else are you missing? You know, maybe you did, maybe over the season you were able to fill a gap or two. Um, but, you know, were you, was it feeling like there was something else lacking? Um, and write that down and keep that in mind for your next season. So again, I think those reflective points are are especially important, especially as your as your first capsule, if this is your first capsule that you're doing, um, because that's the easiest way for you to get to know your personal style, what you like. You'll be able to identify your own trends so that you can really kind of cut out the noise elsewhere. Um, okay, so I think that's kind of it, I think, um, for the capsule wardrobe section. I'll open it up to Q&A for maybe like the next, depending on how many you have. I'm so happy to answer whatever your questions are. Hopefully I'll be able to answer them. Um, and I did see this. A capsule wardrobe seem more geared toward older individuals. Uh, I would love to know why, uh, why you think that. Um, just because I, I, I mean, in in the space I am on YouTube, there are so many young capsule um, capsule closet girls like best dressed. I don't know if you watch her, she's hilarious. She tried a capsule, use less, Sing Hansen, um, loves capsule closets and she's younger than me. Um, so I don't know, I would love to know a little bit more behind your question. We can always chat online as well about that one as well. But I really think um, capsules, I really think capsules are, are great for everybody. It's really just about streamlining your closet. Shirley, you've got to go. See ya. Thank you so much for joining. Lee, this has been awesome. Awesome. I'm so glad. Um, I'm going to stick around a little bit in case you have other questions. Don't forget the discount code down below. So exciting. So you can maybe purchase your own set of <laughs> dressy sweatpants. They're fabulous. Um, and yeah, if there are any other resources, please feel free. Or if you have any other questions, send me a little question on IG. I don't know how I'm gonna hang out here until someone else asks me a question, but no worries if you don't. I'll still, my cat's here with me, so <laughs> he's hanging out, he's taking a nap, so. I'm scanning to see if there were any questions I missed. Oh, so not the rules. Oh, Jane said, not the rule. Are there no, are there any rules anymore? Hmm. That's a great question. I don't think there are, I don't think there really are rules, to be honest, Jane, if you're still on. Um, yeah, it's, uh, no, I don't think there are rules anymore. Like everyone, I don't know if you like the, the old one, like you can't wear black and navy together. People wear black and navy. There aren't really any seasonal rules. Like you can't wear white after Labor Day. Um, you know, there, it's pretty cool. Like the, the environment, the fashion environment that we're living in now um, is really open and, you know, moving to a more accepting space, I think. Black and navy, yeah, me too. Black and navy is so chic, I think. Oh, the cowl neck sweater. That's that's my own piece, sadly. <sighs> but I believe if um, Peter is still on, like I would do something like you could also you could also create a cowl neck from the unblazer, maybe if you fold it right. I would have to play with that a little bit. No, so great question. I'm wearing the jumpsuit. It's I've belted it because there's a nice little here. I'll show you. There's like a little kind of seam here so that it creates a little waist. Jane, I am. Yay. Okay, good. I'm glad I got your question. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm wearing the jumpsuit. It's fabulous. And the um Madame La Chambre, peut-être. Um, your uh, the the jumpsuit that I'm wearing has the same kind of pant silhouette as these, so it's a nice tapered, nice taped silhouette. Oh, thank you, Valerie. <laughs> oh, good, Andy. You cleaned your closet. That's awesome. What is the other white top on the rack? Oh, that's just another one of my pieces as well. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Dana. I can answer that one. If you follow me on IG, I can answer that one for you. 
Looks amazing. Yeah, it's it's super comfortable as well. Um, and I think that's, you know what, that's not really something that I mentioned is that um, these pieces are fabulous for traveling because you don't come off the plane looking disheveled. Uh, you look like you're wearing an awesome piece of clothing, in my opinion. Grazie mille, prego. Grazie di vedere. I find your videos always very helpful and entertaining. Thank you, Martin. She was hard to type. Okay, great. What are my top three favorite encircled items? Ooh, um, excellent question. Okay, number one, jumpsuit, 100%, because I'm wearing it now. Um, I am less of a dress person, more of a pant person. So this really nails that whole like elevated, I need to go out and look fancy, but I want to be wearing pants, uh, this kind of thing. The second favorite, I think I talked about them so much, these, the, the dressy sweatpants. Um, and specifically, as soon as I put them on, I thought, oh, this is my plane outfit. I always struggle with travel. Um, and these are just absolutely fabulous because they're comfortable, but they really look put together. They've got pockets, but also, oh, look at this. They've got this zipper, this sneaky zipper pocket at the back. So if you have any kind of like small valuables or you want to keep a couple of like bills, especially when you're traveling, you know, when you when you get out of a cab or you get out of the airport and your wallet's like stuffed in your bag, um, this would be a great place to just keep like your 20 euro ready to go if you need to hop in a cab. Um, so sorry, I'm taking too long, probably these and um, my third favorite encircled item has to be the beautiful long cardigan because it's just so chic. Um, and I love how it creates a nice long vertical line. Just so, so beautiful. It makes you look taller. Like that's what I always want, right? <laughs> um, the material, Joanna, you asked, of which piece do you remember? Barely pack for a trip. Ooh, yeah. I barely pack for a trip this way. Yeah, so Jane, um, I often find that if you're just starting with capsules, applying those principles to, you know, if you are going traveling, it's kind of a fun way to test, to test a capsule wardrobe. Yes, you can machine wash. Thank you, Peter. Oh, the one I'm wearing. I believe it's Modal. I didn't check the tag. I, I think it's Modal. Peter, I don't know if you're still there, if you can confirm. I think it's Modal. It feels beautiful. Have I thrifted anything lately? <laughs> um, gosh, I haven't shopped. Oof. I don't know. I didn't shop in Jan. I didn't really shop in December. Um, gosh, no, I guess not. I might be lying though. Sometimes I forget. No, I don't think I have. <laughs> Thanks, Mama Squirrel. Valerie, do you feel the unblazer feels more like a Cardi or a blazer? Hmm. So you're not, you might not like this answer. I think it depends on how you wear it and how you style it. Um, I think it, it feels a little bit like both. Um, if I wanted it to feel more like a cardigan, then I would belt it so that it shows off how malleable it is. And I would wear it with like denim or leggings. And then that, I it would feel more like a cardigan. But to be honest, when I wore it, like I tried it on, um, these two pieces together with a more of a coordinated, uh, it felt a little bit more like a blazer. So I think it feels a little bit like both. Sorry, I hope that wasn't too vague of an answer. Where would I find the workbook you referenced? Uh, I linked it in the description box. Um, Peter, if for some reason it's not up anymore or anything like that, although I was able to find it, um, I did, if you check the description box to this webinar, you'll be able to find it. You should be able to. And if not, um, send me a DM on IG and I will get it for you. You're welcome. Okay. I think I'll take like a couple more questions, but I feel like placed my order already. Oh good, I'm so happy. Okay, I'm glad you liked that answer, Valerie. I think you'll really love it. It's a great piece. Okay. Okay, so I think if there are no more questions, I know it's Saturday and you'll probably all have incredible plans. Um, 
So I think I think I'll end it here just in case. Um, I don't know. I always I hate leaving these things. They're so much fun. Um, but so thank you so, so much for joining. Uh, thank you so much to Encircled for helping host and putting this on this incredible webinar. Uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions that perhaps I didn't get to today or even for the guys at Encircled, I've put their um, the gals actually uh, CEO is female. Oh, I would love to see a video on my my chain styling it with the Encircled pieces. Oh, great. I can do that for you. Um, how does the fit that that's a question for Peter compared to the sweaty dress pant? Ooh, Andy, I might be able to also help you with that. They fit very similarly. Um, except I found that the, the dressy sweat pant was a little bit tighter on my thighs and hips versus the jumpsuit has a bit more room in there. I hope that helps. Okay, Valerie, thank you so much, Fun. I'm so glad you found it informative. Thank you so much. This is so great. I can't believe we're getting to chat with you all. Oh, good, Greta, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Um, and don't forget the discount code in the description below. Um, and you'll also be able to see this webinar if you missed it or if you only came in late. This is gonna be on the Encircled YouTube page, which I've also linked in the description box for you. Yay, Monique. Pas de problème. Merci d'être venu. Yay! Love the dancing emo emoji. Ciao. Ciao, Martin. Grazie. Oh, Marie, thank you. I just, I'm so glad. I can't believe it. I can't believe like the internet, the magic of the internet. We're getting to chat in real life. <laughs> so thank you for joining. Good. I'm so glad, Sylvie. Thank you. Okay, 2.15. Oh, I hate signing off. <laughs> bye, bye everybody. Thank you so, so much for joining. Don't forget all of those details in the description box. Ciao. Make sure I have no more questions. I'm so nervous. If you have any questions, send me a DM. <laughs> okay, bye. I hate saying goodbye, I'm the worst. Ciao.